Hi friends, welcome to lesson five here in our science is a verb unit. And I figured I'd start this out appropriately enough with a gigantic number, 602 and 21 zeros after it. And this of course is the way we would write this in scientific notation. Now you may be a little bit confused by that capital E, but just hold on to that till the end. We'll talk about it and I hope it'll make a whole lot more sense at that point. Chemistry is going to deal with really big and really small numbers. Here's a couple of stats for you. You can read them on the slide. Uh, there's a lot, a lot, a lot of carbon atoms in a pencil, and each typical carbon atom is incredibly, incredibly tiny. We need to have a way to deal with really, really big and really, really small numbers that's standardized and that makes them easy to work with. That's what scientific notation is going to do for us. Scientific notation is just a standardized way of writing numbers and it works really well to take giant and incredibly tiny numbers and turn them into a format that makes them very easy to manipulate. Scientific notation is always going to look like this. Each number in scientific notation has two parts. The first part is called the coefficient. And in the coefficient, we're going to have all of the significant figures in the number rewritten as a decimal between one and 10. You never see a coefficient with a magnitude greater than 10 if the number's in scientific notation, and you never see one with a magnitude less than one. It's always taking that number that we have and we're turning it into a number between one and 10. The other part of the scientific notation is the exponent. This represents the number of times we would need to multiply our coefficient by 10 in order to turn it back into its non-scientific version. 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd is that number that we started with, rewritten in scientific notation. Big numbers are always going to have a positive integer as their exponent. The power of 10 is always going to be greater than zero. Here are a couple of examples from page 11 in your packet. Take a moment and look at them. You definitely wanna be able to go back and forth between scientific notation and regular notation for big numbers and small numbers. Page 11 gives you a couple examples for the large numbers that you'll probably have to deal with at some point in your life as a scientist. Small numbers are always going to have a negative number as their exponent. That negative exponent is necessary because that small number is less than one and 10 to the zero is one. So our exponent is going to have to be less than zero in order to make our number smaller than one. Here are a couple examples from page 12 in our unit packet. Here are some examples from page 12 of going back and forth between the regular notation for the number and the number in scientific notation. If you've talked about scientific notation before now, that's probably where you've left it. We're actually gonna go in and look at a couple of other things. One of the nice things about working with exponents with common bases, in this case, base 10, is that we can do interesting things with the exponents. When we multiply two exponents that have a common base, we actually just wind up adding them together to get the product of that multiplication. You can see this written algebraically here, 10 to the A times 10 to the B is going to be equal to 10 to the power of A plus B. And when we divide common base exponents, we're going to wind up subtracting them from each other. You can see that written right here. When we add or subtract common base exponents with the same exponent, that exponent does not change. So 10 to the A plus 10 to the A is going to wind up as 10 to the A. Now, of course, none of this deals with the coefficients. So for the coefficients, we're still gonna to have to do whatever mathematical operation we need to in order to figure things out. When we multiply and divide, my advice is to deal with the coefficients first and then work on the exponents. Let's look at an example to see what I'm talking about. Here's a multiplication example from page 23 of our unit packet. We're gonna multiply 4.70 times 10 to the fifth by 7.3 times 10 to the negative third. I've actually written it out to help you see what's going to happen. We're gonna wind up multiplying 4.70 by 7.3, and then we'll deal with our exponential calculation. A multiplication of 10 to the fifth by 10 to the negative third is going to be equal to 10 to the power of five plus negative three. Once we do our coefficient math, we're gonna get 34.31. And 10 to the five plus negative three is going to be equal to 10 to the second. But of course, we're not actually done here. We have to apply those rounding rules that we talked about in our prior video on rounding. When we multiply two numbers, our final answer can only have as many significant figures as there are in the fewest significant figures in our terms. 4.70 has three significant figures and 7.3 has two significant figures. So our answer can only have two significant figures. We have to modify our answer to be 34 
times 10 to the second. But of course, this isn't actually in scientific notation. And so if we wanted to put it back into scientific notation, we would need to make 34 10 times smaller. And we would do this by making our exponent 10 times larger. So our best answer for this problem is going to be 3.4 times 10 to the third. Take a moment, look at this problem, see if it makes sense. And if it doesn't, make sure that you write down any questions that you have. When we do addition and subtraction, we're gonna work slightly differently. We're actually gonna adjust the exponents first, and then we're gonna do the math that involves the adjusted coefficients. Then we'll figure out our significant figure rounding as needed. Let's look at this example from page 23 in our unit packet. We're going to add 5.6 times 10 to the seven with 4.6 times 10 to the eighth. The first thing that we need to do is adjust one of our terms so that we have a common exponent in base 10. What I chose to do was to adjust my second term. I could have just as easily adjusted my first one. It really doesn't matter as long as we wind up with two of the same powers of 10. Notice that since I had to adjust my exponent in my second term, I also have to adjust my coefficient. I made my exponent one power of 10 less, which means I had to make my coefficient 10 times larger. Once I do that, I can add these numbers together. It'll be 5.6 plus 46 times 10 to the seventh. When I add 5.6 and 46, I'm gonna get 51.6 times 10 to the seventh power. But remember, this isn't the best answer. When we add two terms together, our answer can only be as precise as our least precise term. 46 is precise to the ones place. 5.6 is precise to the tenths. Our answer needs to be rounded off to the ones place. This is going to become 52 times 10 to the seven. And of course, we're still not done if we're asked to put our number back into scientific notation because our number is not currently in scientific notation. I'm gonna to have to make 5.2 10 times smaller, which means I'm gonna to have to make my exponent 10 times larger. And so the best answer that I can record for this operation is going to be 5.2 times 10 to the eighth power. Take a moment and write down any questions that you have, and when you're ready, we'll move on. Before I leave you, I just wanted to give you one last calculator tip. Most calculators have a shortcut that you can use to deal with powers of 10. This is usually signified with a button that either says capital E on it or capital double E together. That E stands in for times 10 to the. This is because you might get a little bit bored or you might be prone to make a mistake in typing in times 10 to the and working out your parentheses each time. Here's an example written out for you so you can see how this works. You could take 1.356 times 10 to the 37 and you can rewrite that as 1.356 e to the 37. That e stands in for times 10 to the. You can write your answers like this wherever you want. You can write them on quizzes and tests, homework, any place you want. So if you really want to, go for it. I certainly don't want to stop you. Of course, if you're not comfortable doing that, if you still need time to work on this before you really feel comfortable, feel free to just write it out in the full way and it will never be a problem. Just be careful putting in full scientific notation into your calculators because of course, the more numbers you put in, the more likely you are to make a mistake. Thanks so much for watching this. Let's make sure that you can do the following things here at the end of this video. Make sure that you can convert between a full number and its scientific notation equivalent, both for very big and for very small numbers. And then make sure that you can use numbers in scientific notation for the four basic arithmetical operations, by which of course we mean addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. If you have any questions, you can always get in touch with me either by leaving a comment right below this video or looking at the contact information in the info field for this video. Thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it. Take it easy.